All right, so let's reset the clock and get started. So yeah, welcome to Lightning Talk session. Got a sort of short 10 minutes, so I'll try not to overrun to uh, keep the rest of my speakers the, the right amount of time. So if anyone saw me this morning, I've changed into my secret identity, which is that as of an OWASP fanboy. Um, the title of this talk is quite clickbaity, but the real title is, uh, what is OWASP? What is the open web, sorry, what is the open worldwide application security project? Because uh, OWASP changed its name last year to more represent the full scope of uh, application security. So I want to take 10 minutes to try and uncover a little bit more about what OWASP is about and the value that it can bring to you and also the value that you can bring to it. So I've been lucky enough to go to various different conferences, work with various different clients and developers, and I get asked a lot of, a lot of questions a lot. So you know, how do I start learning about software security? How can I find places to learn about software security? Uh, how can I find people to help me with software security questions? I have a very specific question in my specific area. Who can I ask about that? You know, maybe I've got someone in my organization, but maybe I do not. And what resources are there that can help me, um, ideally without breaking the bank, without having to fork out too much money? You know, where can I find information about building software securely? And the answer, as you might guess, is uh, OWASP, the Open Worldwide Application Security Project. Its mission is, broadly speaking, to bring freely licensed resources to help build secure software. I mean, there's a lot more information on the website, but that's what it boils down to. And so today I'm going to talk about two parts of that, projects and chapters. And chapters is where we're going to start. Thinking about you know, meeting your local community or meeting the, meeting the community of application security people. Now, during this talk, I'm going to have a lot of links on the slides, and I'm going to go through the slides quite fast. So if you go to this URL, which will be at the bottom of all the slides as well, I've got a blog post that's not got many words, but what it does have is a lot of links. And it's got all the links and more that will be in here. So don't worry about writing everything down. Just remember the name, and then look on that post, and you can see the links that I talk about and the projects that I talk about. So community, do you have a local OWASP chapter? Uh, if you live here in Oslo, the answer is yes. I spoke there last year. It was great fun. Really nice uh, group of people. OWASP chapters, you know, OWASP is for anyone who's involved in software development and wants to under understand about security. Or alternatively, people in security who want to understand more about AppSec. If you can find your local chapter, it's a group of people who will meet up a few times a year, have talks about application security or discuss application security, and you can discuss with them or commiserate with them. There's a nice uh, map-based tracker if you want to know where your local chapter is, or you can also search for your local area. Alternatively, if you don't have a local chapter, or your local chapter isn't active, there's also a Slack workspace where you can go and, again, discuss with people. There are lots of different channels on lots of different topics, ask about the project, ask about specific problems you're having, and you know, hopefully get some useful feedback and useful ideas. So that's the community aspect. People you can go and ask and commiserate with. But what about the resources? So let's talk about OWASP projects. There are a lot of OWASP projects. Um, last time I looked on the website, there were 173. Uh, I'm not going to recite them all to you now, because that would take a long time. And luckily, a lot of them are very early stage or a bit unmaintained. The important ones are in the upper part over here. They're ones that are either flagship, you know, strategically important to OWASP, which is 15 of them. There are five which are now at production status, which is quite new, so a lot of projects haven't got there yet. But it says you know, these are mature, well-maintained, useful projects that you should be using. And then there's Lab, which is the 36 there. Those are projects that are on their way. They've been already gone through one graduation. Again, they're well-maintained. They're providing useful information and they can benefit you when you're looking for how to solve AppSec problems. So of all those 100 pro so projects, you know, that's the section that you want to be thinking about. Those are the ones that are going to bring you the most value. Um, but that's still a lot. And one thing that OWASP does have on the website is something called the Wayfinder, which is supposed to try and help guide you, OK, this is where I am in my development journey, or this is the type of problem I'm trying to solve, which projects might help me with that. But it's still a little bit complicated, though. So I, I'm going to highlight some that I think are particularly interesting, particularly useful, and are not well known. So speaking of well known, here are three that don't need any introduction, I don't think. Um, three that are well known enough or well documented enough that I don't think I need to talk about them any further. The top 10 risks, which if anyone has heard of OWASP, they've heard of the OWASP top 10. Uh, OWASP Juice Shop, if you saw Bjorn's talk earlier about Juice Shop, he's probably still around here as well if you want to chat to him about it, but there are loads of resources on the internet about that. I'm not going to talk more about it, but it's a great vulnerable application. And finally, for mobile security, there's a project dedicated for mobile app security 
variety of sub-projects within that. Again, very well documented, very well known about, and certainly check it out if mobile applications are relevant for you, but it's well known enough that I don't want to go into too much detail. I want to pick out some of the, uh, the underdogs, let's say. So if you want to start, if you're either you or your developers are quite early stage in your security journey, you're not sure what you want to, uh, you know, what you need to know, what you should be thinking about. So for a basic intro to security, I like to talk about the OWASP proactive controls. So these are 10 positive practices. These aren't, this isn't the regular OWASP top 10, which is kind of here are 10 problems. These are 10 solutions, 10 ways that you can build security into your application, 10 things to think about while you're building your application so that you can build it in a secure way. It's not everything, it's not comprehensive. We'll get to comprehensive later on. But it's a nice document to read through and get an idea. Here are some important topics about security. You can read through it yourself. You can give it to your developers. It's not too long. If you want to get your developers engaged in security, you can go in a completely different direction. So OWASP Cornucopia is a card game. Each card's got a threat on it and various mappings to other OWASP projects as well. You can sit around a table with developers, get away from your laptops entirely, get away from your keyboards, and sit with your developers and play this game and read through the cards and say, okay, well, this is the threat on this card. Now, what might we be doing about that in our application? You know, how do we solve that today? Do we solve that today? Is that something we thought about? It's a great way of building engagement and building discussion about security without you know, hands-on keyboard or trying to get into sort of day-to-day -day processes. And then what if we need to solve a specific security problem? We need solutions. Now, the OWASP Cheat Sheets project is a set of over 50 different documents that go deep into a particular topic. How do you write secure C-sharp code? How do you work with databases securely? How do you do key management securely? How do you do infrastructure as code securely? And these are deep dive documents to try and help you solve those particular problems. So these are three great projects to start with. Once you're a little bit further along your journey, or you've got a slightly more mature application security function, so what if you want the more detailed, the comprehensive security guidance? So for that, you've got the OWASP ASVS, the Application Security Verification Standard. Uh, that's the best project in OWASP, although I'm, I'm a little bit biased because that's my project that I'm a co-leader of. Um, I actually spoke about this at NDC last year, so if you're interested in how to apply that, then look up my talk from last year. This gives you a comprehensive set of requirements and in, split into different areas Here's how you build software securely, step by step, requirement by requirement. So if you're in the stage where you can do something in more detail, more comprehensively, that's a great reference to look at. A few people asked me about SBOM and third party libraries, uh, software composition analysis. There are a lot of vendors that will sell you tools in that area. If you want an initial picture on that, OWASP has various projects for that as well. Dependency track, which will let you track some third party library vulnerabilities on an ongoing basis. Dependency check, where you can do that on sort of a, a one-off as you do your compilation process. And then Cyclone DX, which de generates software bill of materials, an inventory of the libraries in your software. Again, these are open source, these are freely available, and they may give you, you know, an introduction into this area, an introduction to managing this particular type of risk. What about Web Application Firewall, or WAF? So OWASP actually now has two WAFs, interestingly enough, uh, as of a couple of days ago. So OWASP has had something called the core rule set, which is a set of WAF rules which were compatible with mod security. Um, and recently there's a new project set up called Corazza. Uh, there's a guy hanging around here, he spoke yesterday, called uh, Jose Carlos, who is one of the co-leaders of that project, Corazza. And that is a project that is the WAF that uses the rules from core rule set. And literally the last couple of days, OWASP has now adopted mod security itself as well. So you've now got a couple of options for open source, freely available WAF, and rules to go with it. So that's lots of stuff that OWASP can bring you, lots of resources that OWASP can bring you. But you can bring OWASP things as well. You can bring your time, but you can also join as a member. So OWASP members, it's a very small amount for membership. I can't remember if I put a link in there in the end, but uh, you can easily find it in the blog post afterwards. It brings various benefits. You can get OWASP email address, the vote in board elections, which means you can govern the direction of the foundation. You can get discounts on some of the big conferences that they do. There are also a few member perks as well. You know, for example, Secure Flag, who I know are out there on the, on the uh, partner set area, they have a special membership tier for OWASP members to get access to their platform. So it's a small amount each, month, each year, sorry. Um, probably less than I spent on a, one beer a couple of nights ago. 
not quite, but <laughs> it's around a similar, set, similar uh, range, let's say. And yeah, it uh, helps to build the organization and build the membership of the organization because there are lots and lots and lots, you know, hundreds of thousands of users of OWASP resources, but probably only a thousand or so members. So in summary, what can you do for OWASP? You can join as a member, you can if you use projects, contribute back, contribute your ideas, contribute your suggestions. Most of them are developed in the open and most of the project leaders are very open to ideas and suggestions. And spread the word about OWASP as well. You know, let people know about it, let developers know that these resources exist and these chapters exist and this is where they can get this information. Because there are a lot of resources that can help you here. I think raise the overall level of application security. Uh, my contact details are here if you want to ask me further questions, but right now I need to go and catch a plane. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a good afternoon. On to you, Stephen. Thank you.